September 27th. Okay, so we have the moon in Leo energy here all day. This is definitely a fiery energy being a fixed fire sign, which means that we are a little bit more extroverted than normal. We want to be seen. We want to be heard. We want to engage with the people, with the world around us. We also are in a pretty good mood and attitude to come up with some creative solutions to a lot of the issues, a lot of the problems that, of course, we've been banging our head against a wall about. We are also so kind of realizing that we're seeking something a little bit more meaningful. We want a different level of connection, a different level of intimacy with the people, with the world around us as well. We're tapping into new levels of compassion and empathy in order to see things from the different side of the coin, different set of eyes. We are in labor season. That's the point of being able to see things from all angles. So there is this restlessness that will be building throughout the day. A lot of that is because we're looking for something exciting, for something inspiring. We're kind of a little bit discontent, a little bit bored. That Leo energy wants us to be bold and brave and courageous to kind of go out in the world, find something to latch on to and actually inspire us to want to do better, to want to be better, to actually start manifesting a lot of the aspects, if you will, that our future vision, goal, dream definitely wants us to start working upon. So with all of that being said, there are 10 different aspects taking place here today. Nine of them are going to involve the moon. The one aspect that does not involve the moon is going to be between Venus and Jupiter. And we are definitely going to kind of see an extra layer of discontentment, an extra layer of restlessness, an extra layer of ants putting in our pants by this particular energy and transit. We'll talk about that when we get to it. To kick the day off, we do have the moon in Leo energy sextiling, which is a beautiful interaction with the sun shining very brightly in Leo energy. We have fire and air working together to give us a little bit of creativity, to give us a little bit of inspiration, of excitement. Now, anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there is going to be an aha moment, an emotional awareness of what it is that we want, what we need, what we desire. And right now, we just want something exciting. We want something inspiring to get our inner wheels a turning and to actually help us get out of this funk. The moon in Leo energy, then going to get into the boxing ring, square off with Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who of course is in Scorpio energy. The square highlights where it is that we're going through growing pains. We have a realization through the tension, through the conflict that we realize is taking place, not only within us, but within certain relationship dynamics. Again, we're still in eclipse season. That's having a major impact on the soul contracts that we are either renewing or terminating or initiating. We're in Libra season that has a huge spotlight on relationships. And so emotionally speaking, again, in this Leo energy, we are really starting to see where it is that, again, we have this realization on what we need to do, what we need to change, where we need to grow, where we need to evolve. And that requires us to cut some things off to create distance, energy, space, if you will, with particular connections. But of course, we're in Libra season. We don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to poke the bear. But Venus in the Scorpio energy, man, she is taking us into the depths of our darkness to identify the fears, the doubts, the insecurities that are preventing us from going after what it is that we truly desire which is intimacy, which is connection, which is relationship dynamics that allow us to feel those particular things, but also give us a sense of freedom. So this is going to be a heart activation where we're going to realize likely the hard way where it is that we're having a change of heart, where it is that we do have to work on building ourselves up in our inner realm to be bold and brave and courageous enough to do the hard thing, which just happens to be the right thing, which is to declare our new thoughts, our new feelings, our new wants, needs, and desires in order to really kind of put ourselves and the people in our lives in a new position to understand either where we have to work to compromise, again, Libra season energy, or where it is that we are initially holding our ground, standing in this particular position, and we're not willing to budge. This is coming 
out of a new sense of self-worth, self-esteem, self-confidence. This is coming out of realizing what it is that we now want to build, want to create. The moon is then going to semi-square, creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings. Jupiter, of course, is in the Gemini energy. A lot of the reason of why we're having a hard time trying to figure out which path, which direction we actually want to be walking. The Gemini energy definitely has us very divided within ourselves, within relationship dynamics within choices within options within opportunities and now that we're in Libra season which is hella indecisive all in itself we're definitely seeing the teeter-totter back and forth trying to bring those scales into balance now normally if Jupiter was being aspected in a positive way we would gain a lot of insight gain a lot of clarity gain a lot of confidence gain a lot of optimism but this is not a positive interaction and therefore we don't have a very good idea on what it is that needs to be done we're not feeling optimistic about our situations our circumstances we're not feeling confident within ourselves that we're able to do what needs to be done in order to break us out of some looping past patterns and behaviors and of course set us up to initiate a new path a new direction this is going to illuminate where it is that we ourselves are creating blockages creating obstacles, creating challenges in our path, because again, our heart and head are not in alignment. And therefore, we are creating a certain level of confusion that does not need to be there. Because again, we are wavering back and forth. Just when we decide on something, something feels right. We second guess it. We kind of walk ourselves back through it. We backpedal. And there we are at a new level of confusion. The moon is then going to try beautiful interaction with the North Node in Aries energy. That North Node is trying to get us on the right path to be more independent, to go on the solo quest, the solo adventure, to get to know thyself, to fulfill the wants, needs and desires of our own soul contracts. Again, this is a trine, fire on fire action. We love that. Fire helps us burn away a lot of the heavier thoughts, the heavier emotions that are blocking our ability to see the forest past the trees. That fire energy also regenerates, rejuvenates a spark, a fire, a flame within us in order to actually tap into a new mood and attitude to boss up, to see where it is that, again, we have to kind of be accountable. We have to be responsible for our own lives. Emotionally speaking, we are starting to see the ability to kind of choose a different path, a different direction, a new option, a new opportunity where we're building in the boldness, the bravery, the courage that we've been recently lacking, let's say, in order to actually do what is right for ourselves first and foremost. The moon then goes ahead, makes a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who rules over rules, responsibilities, systems, structures, foundations, willpower, and discipline. He's currently retrograde in Pisces energy, trying to deconstruct the old set of beliefs, Ty trying to deconstruct the old version of self, because of course that old version of self had wants, needs, and desires that we've been actively working on manifesting, and many of us very successful in doing so, except for right now, the new version of self has emerged with new wants, needs, and desires, realizing that we're no longer resonating with people, places, and things that the old version of self was very attached and connected to. And so we really need to dissect where it is that again, we are wrapping things up. We're bringing things to a completion stage in certain topics and themes, certain karmic chapters in our lives. And we need to clear the space and clean the slate before we can start building towards something new. This is going to show us where it is that we have to get a little bit more serious about our future plans, our future goals, where it is that we have to be a little bit more serious about what actually needs to be done. And again, building the confidence, the self-esteem, the certainty within us that again, we can achieve what we need to achieve. We can do the hard things that again, we don't want to be doing right now because labor season has us people pleasing, but we're starting to realize again, we're in ourselves, we're building a new idea, a new vision of what it is that we want to build. We want to create, we want to bring to life. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who is retrograde in Taurus energy. This is going to bring an aha moment. This is going to bring a certain amount of clarity, especially realizing where it is that we're trapped, where it is that we're blocked, where it is that we have a back against a wall here in our physical form. We are looking for freedom. We are looking for independence. We are looking to break away from the old realm, the old reality that that old version of self had created. But again, there's a little bit of fear 
of fully detaching from a lot of those people, places and things, because again, we really have to understand that many of us are sitting around waiting for something better to knock on our door in order for us to let go of the things that we no longer are attached to. That's not how the universe works. We have to let go in trust, in faith that something better will kind of, you know, knock on our door eventually and fill the space in a much better way. You have to release. You have to create the space first before new people, places, things, opportunities are actually going to arrive. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction with Mars. Mars is the god of war. He rules over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desire, even our anger. He's in cancer energy, which is not his most favorite place to be in because he can't go directly after what it is that we want. We have to take a sideways detour, if you will, kind of, you know, mimicking the crab that cancer represents. We are semi-defensive. We are highly protective. We are in preservation mode. The only actions that we are willing to make at this particular juncture are actions that are going to continue to provide us with the safety, the security, the, the stability that we have been actively trying to build in order to protect ourselves, in order for us to protect who and what means the most to us. Now, the moon interacting with Mars in this way is definitely putting us in a little bit more of a passionate type of arena where we're starting to realize, again, what is worth the fight, what is worth defending and protecting what is worth our energy and trying to keep certain, let's call it connections alive, certain aspects alive, certain cycles alive. And again, that moon in Leo energy has a lot of ants in our pants at this particular point in time. We want to be bold. We want to be brave. We want to be courageous enough to do the hard thing in order to actually pivot our path, our direction to start building towards something new. But of course, we are still in completion mode, meaning we are in an ending of a cycle. There isn't all kinds of new coming at us. The only thing new that we actually have the ability to build, to create, to actually initiate upon are things that are going to help us remove the old aspects, the old structures, the old routines, the old people, places, and things of the old world. And so again, we are kind of building ants in our pants. We want to take action. We want to make moves, but there's not the kind of moves that we were actually hoping for. The moon in Leo then going to make an awkward interaction with Neptune, who of course is retrograde in his placement of power here in the Pisces energy. This is going to help us kind of refine, if you will, the goal, the vision, the dream. This is going to help us tap into a new stream of creativity. This is going to help kind of put into perspective what it is that we're being called to do, called to pursue. The moon then goes ahead and makes a very harsh interaction with Saturn. So this is where we're going to get a reality check. This is where we're going to realize that, again, the new goal, the new vision, the new dream can't be built upon, can't be acted upon until we clean up the remnants, the debris, the fragments, the loose ends of the past. And of course, it doesn't feel good to get a harsh reality check. It doesn't feel good to put into perspective all of the things on our to-do list, which happens to be to boss up, happens to be to kind of bring the old world's old roles and responsibilities to an end to a close. It doesn't feel good to realize where it is that we are still operating on old systems, old structures that, again, we've outgrown, that we're not resonating with, that we want to evolve past. However, we're in cleanup mode and we're not given a whole lot of opportunity to totally deconstruct and destroy the whole scene at the same time. We're doing it in little bits and little pieces. Now, the last thing that we have going on here today is the one aspect that doesn't involve the moon. And again, it's between Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in Scorpio energy, and Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, and blessings in Gemini energy. So again, this is kind of adding to our anxiety. It's adding to the ants in our pants. It's adding to the restlessness that we are currently experiencing in our soul space. 
a lot of this is because we are being magnified. That's what Jupiter does. He turns the volume all the way up on a particular topic and theme because Venus is involved. It says everything to do with our heart space. It has everything to do with our pleasures, our happiness, our joy, our relationship dynamics, our money matters. We are recognizing what it is that we want more of. Be careful because when you realize what you want more of, it is very easy to slip into a scarcity mindset. Wah, wah, I want more of this. I don't have this. I'm never going to get it. This is a, again, an opportunity to be aware of what it is that you want more of and to tap into the right mind space in order to actually attract it. If we're able to tap into this particular energy in a good way, this is going to help us really see where we need to build willpower, discipline, motivation, inspiration in order to encourage us to get our ass in gear and actually improve the situations that we're deeming aren't good enough for us, aren't exciting enough, aren't safe enough, aren't secure enough, aren't stable enough. If you're not able to channel this particular energy well, then this is going to lead to the victimhood mentality. The wham, wham, I'm never going to get this, I'm never going to have that. And of course, we have the ability to over-exaggerate where Jupiter is concerned, so there's that cautionary note as well. But we can just find ourselves kind of numbing. Maybe you're going to overindulge in food. Maybe you're going to overindulge in some other not-so-nice habit, pattern, and behavior to kind of fill the void that you're now recognizing that you yourself have responsibility and accountability that you haven't built for yourself. If you want more of something, you have the ability to align with it to create more of it, or you can sit around and cry about it. Either way, there's going to be, again, we're in Libra season, there's going to be one scale that tips in a positive direction, the other scale that tips in the negative direction. Your time, your energy, your attention, dictates what level of the scale you're actually tipping in your favor or tipping against you. So make sure that you are using your mind, your body, your soul to stay in alignment, to realize that when you want more of something, it is in your ability to obtain. You just have to have the right kind of mindset, the right kind of vibration and frequency in order to get your ass in gear, get your shit together and actually create a realm and reality that looks good, that feels good, that ticks off all the boxes and fills the voids within you.